Hi guys, welcome back. This is going to be a two part video. The first part is me heading off to meet up with Dave from Predator Protections. He's very kindly invited me up to his place to go out after the rabbits at night with a rim fire. And then we're going to go out after the grey squirrels on an early morning session um, to a feeder that he's got set up and a purpose built hide and hopefully knock a few of those out the tree as well. So very much looking forward to that. It's been a long time coming. The second part of the video is I'm going to be doing a bit of a product review on this. No, it's not a PAR 007. This is actually from a company called One Leaf. Um, it's their NV100 Commander. It is a rear add-on, day and night scope. And I'm going to be sort of putting it through its paces, um, be good on the squirrels during the day, and then I'm going to take it out at night to see how good the built-in IR torch is with it. Now, a lot of built-in IRs aren't that good, so it's going to be interesting to see what this one is like. Um, first impressions, yeah, very nice little unit, very compact. But not only did they send me this, they also sent a scope to go with it. This is the One Leaf scope, which I shall talk about at the end of the video. But what I like about this is that it simply just clicks and locks into the back of the scope. So no need for collars or wrapping tape around it like you do with some of the other units. This is a purpose-built scope to take this unit. Bayonet tight fitting, ever so easy. Click it in and out, job done. So this is on my um, air rifle, sub 12 air rifle. A lot of you have seen it in a couple of other videos that I've done. But um, it's my BSA R10 Mark II. Uh, 22 caliber so this would be used after the squirrels and like I say I will do a um, session at night hopefully perhaps get a rabbit or two but if not it literal, literally will be just to see how good this IR is and how the unit fares at night I'm not going to use any additional IR because I want you guys to see how good or how bad this is going to be at night so literally the unit the scope the mounts all from one leaf and um, yeah, basically you're gonna put it through its paces. So I'm gonna be sighting this in now for 22 yards because that's the distance between the hide and the squirrel feeder. So I'm gonna go and put this on paper. The next time that you see us, we're gonna be out after the rabbits with the rim fire. Let's get this nice sort of David Attenborough footage of that. 
and all of a sudden it disappears. Tell you what, Jim, there's a very unhealthy pile of bodies down there on the floor. Yeah. <coughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Without even going in the menu, the charge of article. Squirrel on the fader. That's very fortunate, you're not hanging there, aren't you? No, he's coming down. Right, does myself for out it is little hide after the squirrels and Des assured me that the squirrels were gonna turn up just before eight o'clock. Three minutes to eight. Three minutes to eight is what he guaranteed me and he lied. It turned up before that. <laughs> four minutes early. <laughs> it turned up four minutes early. But um, yeah, I took the first shot, which uh, was nice to get in the bag, I must admit. Knocked it off its perch and since then we've had like quite a steady stream. I think we must be nearing double figures now. I have no idea what the time is. It's 10 to 9. It's 10 to 9. We've been here since about 20 past 7. Yep. So yeah, it's been very productive. Um, like I say, nearly double figures now. Des has just put the kettle on, going to have hot chocolate. Got a crosshair bun, as he calls them. Got to have a crosshair bun. Crosshair, <laughs> crosshair <laughs> bun. <laughs> we need them. But uh, no, we were very lucky with the weather because it poured down last night, but sort of touch wood, it's um, stayed dry at the moment. But it's quite a lot of activity, so hopefully in the next sort of couple of hours we'll be able to put a few more on the deck. But so far, so good. Right, there we go. My time has uh, unfortunately come to an end with Des. So, Des, I'd like to say thank you very much You're welcome, for your Jim. hospitality. It's really nice to have you come over. It's oh, the most expensive piece of water to, to uh, come across. It is for the distance. Yeah, it for is. For the distance. But, um, but yeah, the squirrel shooting side of things was brilliant. The rabbit side of things, wow, it was a bit of an epic fail, if I say. Well, but, I think um, the weather, to make The weather, yeah, we're blaming the weather. Yeah, the weather didn't The weather help. was shocking <laughs> last night. Really, really hard, cold wind. Yeah. And it was coming from the wrong direction. So I don't think animals were going to venture out no, of that hedgerow it was bright into, too, into it? open. Um, you can put, there were probably loads of them the other side of the hedge into the quarry. But yeah. uh, it's just one of those things, mate. It is, yeah. it is. But it's been an absolute pleasure meeting those. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, it's been um, good fun. Yeah, it has. It's been great fun. Um, but uh, it's sort of given me the bug to go sort of squirrel yeah. shooting and that now. But uh, obviously not on the island because that's illegal. Oh yeah, well, red, you've got <laughs> we got the reds over yeah, there. But, um, yeah. yeah, but uh, no, it's been brilliant. So um, all I've got to do now is literally give my final thoughts on the MV100, yep. which I'm going to do after this when I get back. 
But um, no, it's been a pleasure um, to yeah. yourself and to Heidi as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, if anyone gets an invite from Des to come up and go and have a wander around with him, just do it. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's uh, been a right giggle. Um, but it's not just that, the places that we went to, his insight and knowledge about everything that was going on, it's like a history lesson. I didn't learn that much at school, and within half an hour I learned more then. But, well, yeah, um, yeah, we were lucky. Some of the places you went last night, um, the general public wouldn't go there. No. And, and you survived the haunted hangar. The, yes, the haunted the hangar. Doom. Yes, yeah. which was... Which, um, is, which is good fun. Yeah. There was nothing in there. It was. Well, there was. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, the interesting, one interesting thing is, for those people that do watch my channel, Jim is one of the first people that I've taken out that has stayed awake. Yeah. Who's the other one that didn't? Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to name remember. names. No, I'm not going to name yeah. names. I'll have to give Robin a ring and ask yeah. him if he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's been brilliant. And once again, Des, thanks very no, much. You're and, um, it's nice, nice to meet up. So, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Um, like I said, I'm going to do the review on the 100 at the end of this bit. Um, but yeah, it's been brilliant. So, as always, guys, thanks very much for watching. Des, it's been brilliant. Hopefully we'll do this again very soon. Yeah. Um, but for now, guys, see you later. Cheerio. Thanks for watching. Okay, this tree line in front is about 150 yards away. This is on the uh, base mag of the scope. And this is on the lowest setting on the inbuilt IR torch. And considering it's on the lowest setting for such a small torch, that's not a bad picture with this little unit. So same tree line. Just gonna increase the brightness of the torch now. And I must admit that is impressive for such a small IR torch. And these little birds are about 25 yards away in this pen. So you certainly wouldn't have any problems ratting with this. So there we go, my trip came to an end and I just want to say Dave thanks ever so much for the invite up mate, um, it was brilliant, loved it, shame we didn't get a few more rabbits, I know the weather conditions weren't great but um, I did miss a couple as well but managed to put two on the deck so I'm sure the fox would be happy with those. Um, the squirrel shooting side of it was unbelievable, that was my first ever proper session on the greys and I certainly got a bug to go out and do it again I must admit but uh, so Dave thanks ever so much, looking forward to meeting up with you again soon mate. Um, for those of you who haven't seen Dave's channel, head over to Predator Protections, he's got some great videos on there and he's even got his video of our trip out as well, so take a look at that on his take on how we got on, you won't be disappointed, it was a really good video, um, so yeah, head over to his channel and uh, take a look at what he's got on there. As for the NV100 Commander from One Leaf, I must admit I'm impressed with this little unit, I'm not a huge fan of rear add-ons, I must admit. But this one, I was particularly impressed with. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a couple of little issues with it, which I'll come on to in a moment. But the image quality for a rear add-on, obviously, is not going to be as good as a dedicated um, scope, day or night scope. But yeah, I was impressed with how good it actually performed in the field. I probably could have spent a little bit longer trying to crisp up the image a little bit, but. Um, from what you saw on there was pretty much what you see through the unit itself but yes you can make the image quality a little bit better and I'm sure a lot of you noticed that the 
crosshair wasn't quite central. Now that's not a fault of the unit, that was down to me not noticing a particular setting in the main menu where you can actually shift the crossover, crosshair over to centralise it. I didn't know about this um, until I went out at night and I had a play around with it and uh, went in the menu set and I realised and then I'd moved the crosshair over and it was absolutely spot on. So that was uh, an error on my part so yeah don't be put off by that you can actually adjust it and make it spot on in the middle. Um, the IR torch I must admit I didn't think it was going to perform as well as what it did. Um, literally to pull it out pull it out or slide it back whether you're on it on flood or spot depending on your choice. For the distance that it went, I was impressed with it. I really was, uh, especially on the lowest setting and then clicking it up to full power. It was quite impressive for such a small torch. If you wanted to use an additional IR, I probably would at night, I must admit, literally to save the battery life itself, which in uh, this particular model takes an 18650, 18650 battery. But just remember, it's the flat top type, not the one with the little nipple on the top. It has to be a flat top type battery. Um, but yeah, certainly got some um, good time out of it. Probably lasts about four hours out in the field during a day. You could probably halve that at night if you're going to continuously use the IR torch. But um, yeah, that's where I would use an additional one. But for the actual performance, which is what I wanted to show you, I couldn't fault it. Really, really good. The actual um, menu settings of the unit, there's two pages. I think there's 10 items per page on there. And it's got everything from zero in to profiles to what format that you want to run the video footage at at 30 frames per second or 60 frames. Um, it's all on there, like I say, adjusting the crosshair so it's in the centre of the picture. Um, there's loads and loads on there. It's really, really good. But the only thing is you can't record the menu. Um, by, if you're like recording footage and you click onto the menu, it stops recording. So you can't actually record the menu setup, which is a bit of a shame because I wanted to show you that. But... Um, uh, when it comes to zooming in using the unit, if you're recording and you start clicking it up, zooming it in, it stops recording. Not quite sure why, so I was sort of like using the zoom on the scope more than the actual unit itself. Um, and when you do zoom in, it's not instant. There is, it seems like a couple of second delay as it goes up through uh, the zooms from one times up to three times. You click it and there's a delay, the screen goes dark then it comes back, then it goes dark. So that could do with improving. Um, but other than that, I must admit, they're pretty much the only sort of cut of faults with it, really. If um, you are recording and you want to speak on it like I did, I had the microphone on 50%. Um, I found that if I went more, like 75% or 100%, the sound quality was terrible, absolutely terrible. So sort of, if you want to talk with it, Keep it on 50 or perhaps a little bit low, you'll have no problems at all. Um, some of you may not want to talk on it and just you know rely on the shot, but I would say 50 is the maximum that you want to go on the microphone. Um, otherwise it sort of either stops or distorts and you know which isn't very good. But other than that, the overall performance was really, really good. Um, the scope itself, which obviously came with the unit, which is uh, one leaf's take on it, it's a 3 to 12 by 56 side focus scope, uh, illuminated reticle, um, yeah the glass in this is crystal clear. To use this scope during the day, yeah I would definitely use it. Um, no problems with this whatsoever. And like I say, the way that the um, unit just locks into it with a bayonet type fitting is brilliant. So no mucking about with collars or tape or anything like that. That is it and to me it's good to go. It really is. Putting it on an air rifle, maybe a rimfire, yeah, it'd be an ideal setup, especially for someone getting into the night vision world itself. If you're new to it, then yeah, this is great. I really would recommend it. Other than the couple of little bits and pieces that I found with it, um, that wouldn't bother me too much, I must admit. The actual unit performed really, really well. I would go into the settings more just to fine tune it, just to make the image quality a lot better. Um, but yeah, other than that, I couldn't fault it. Really, really good scope and a really good rear add-on. So I just want to say a massive thank you to One Leaf for sending this out to me. Um, yeah, if if you are interested, then head over to One Leaf site. Um, not quite sure on the prices. I'd imagine they would have changed a little bit. I think you can buy the unit separate, or you can buy it as a package like this. 
Um, you probably get the unit for around a couple hundred quid, I'd imagine. If you buy this with the scope, I think it's probably going to cost you about 400 thereabouts. But head over to their site and get full details on it. So that's pretty much it, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I've loved putting this putting this unit through its paces, um, and uh, meeting up with Dave was um, just a joy, absolute joy. Uh, we had a good laugh. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I say, if you are interested in this, go over to One Leaf onto their website, take a look at what they've got, and um, yeah. I will see you guys on the next one. See you soon.